Welcome back to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm Satoli. Today we're in St. Francisville, Illinois, and we're at the site of the old Cannonball Bridge. Stay tuned and I'll tell you all about it. The Wabash Cannonball Bridge is 1,441 feet long and spans the Wabash River between Indiana and Illinois. Built in 1897 as a railroad bridge by the Big Four Railroad, it has now been transformed into a one-lane automobile bridge, making this one of the most unusual bridges in North America. The bridge has gone through a series of replacements and updates over the years. Driving from Indiana to Illinois, you begin by crossing a series of plate girder spans built in 1904 by the King Bridge Company of Cleveland, Ohio. These spans were built probably to replace a series of timber bridges constructed in 1897. The first steel through truss span that you go through was built in 1924 to replace a previous section of bridge. The next span is part of the original bridge built in 1897 by the Edgemore Bridge Works of Wilmington, Delaware. The third span was built in 1924 and is a swing bridge which at one time would swing 90 degrees to allow paddle boats to run up and down the Wabash River. The swing bridge was actually operated by hand using a large gear set underneath resting on the pier. The next through truss span is part of the original bridge constructed in 1897 followed by another set of girder spans constructed in 1924. The bridge last saw rail usage in the late 1960s. By 1970, a local farmer by the name of Frank Stangle purchased the bridge for use to move heavy farm equipment safely over the river. He began by removing the rails and replacing them with long boards to cover the rail ties. The rails were then cut down to size and used as vertical supports for the guardrails that would be installed. These cut rails are still in use today. There is also another bridge a quarter mile west of the river called the St. Francisville Bridge. This is a timber stringer one lane bridge built in 1906 for the railroad and later converted to automobile traffic. This is scheduled to be replaced in 2021. In 1995, Frank sold the bridge to the city of St. Francisville, Illinois, and in 2009, the state of Illinois purchased the bridge from the city. Today, it is operated by the state and open to the public traffic for $1.50 toll paid on the Illinois side of the river. Aside from being a bridge pieced together from three different eras dating back to 1897, it's also a thrill to drive across listening to the wooden planks clank as the Wabash River flows below. Sometimes two cars going in the opposite direction will meet in the middle and then someone has to take the high road and back up across this crazy bridge. The bridge is also reported to be haunted and has been referred to as the Purple Head Bridge. The story goes that a man tried to commit suicide on the bridge by hanging himself. Something went wrong, and when he jumped off the bridge with the rope around his neck, he was decapitated, and his body was never found, only the head still secured by the rope. I highly suggest you visit this bridge before the end of 2020. As mentioned previously, the state of Illinois has set aside $7 million to update this beast, and it will never be the same as it is today.
Thanks for watching another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Today we were in St. Francisville, Illinois at the site of the old Cannonball Bridge. Hope you enjoyed it and remember, travel slowly and stop often. See you next time. Mm -hmm.